Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got five packages here, and so it's time for another mailbag. I'm especially excited to see what's in this one because I don't actually know what's in this one. So this package here was actually sent to me by a company, and I selected one thing, but I told them it was going to take a really long time to get here, so if they wanted to send more, they could just send more. So I don't know if it's the one thing that I have or uh, more, you know, or just more more of the same, I have no idea. So it's outside of the envelope because the envelope had no indication what this was, and it wasn't something I had ordered. Uh, so I'll put the name of the company on the bottom here. I don't have internet right now. This is during the Great Rogers Outage of Canada. So it seems to be only the one thing. Maybe there's more, but anyways, yeah, so this is what I asked for. So there's the company, uh, Z, but I think this same logo on AliExpress is like the Huangzing robot store, something like that. So yeah, this should be a neat little kit. This is uh, just supposed to be a little solar panel, an Arduino and a um, hat for it, and a couple of light sensors, and it's supposed to be able to track... Um, the light, you know, it's supposed to track basically uh, the sun for the best solar exposure. So it's going to have probably a couple servos. There's a little Arduino Uno, and there's the hat. Well, yeah, there's actually quite a complete kit. Um, their kits are not actually that expensive, uh, especially considering what you get. And honestly, like, this is like a rigid uh, plastic bag, so it's not like ordering, you know, from the lowest denominator seller. Yeah, even these. Everything just feels like there's a little bit of more care put into it. Uh, these look like LDRs. Okay, they are LDRs on here. So I guess the premise is you have this cross, right? This little X, and each corner has an LDR. And whichever one of these has the most light shining on it, uh, I think it'll have the least resistance or the most, I don't remember. Uh, and so it'll just spin until they're all four are pretty much equal, uh, which means that it's pretty much you know, facing directly into the sun. So it's going to be a pretty neat kit to put together. It's going to get a separate video, of course. It's got this uh, laser cut plywood. Very neat. It's very clearly cut all the way through, which is nice. And it's going to snap apart pretty easily. So yeah, this thing could be fun. And um, the thing is, you've got these kinds of kits like the one uh, that Steph Piper made, this little cat here. Um, it's these kinds of kits that you want to give to kids to get excited about soldering. It's something that ends up being a piece of art for the desk or uh, a, a piece of technology that you can just watch go throughout the day. These kinds of things is perfect for kids that want to get involved into uh, making kits and stuff. Um, these kinds of projects, like the ones I tend to make, this little current sensor, this is more for the home hobbyist, someone's already established. These kinds of things, they're for the kids. I mean, for the adult kids too. Next ones uh, up are these two, uh, because they go together. So this one was $22.10. This one was uh, nearly $6. Both ordered June 10th arrived. This one June 20th and this one arrived June 28th. Um, yeah, they're both completely related to a project that I've now restarted working on. So let's see if you guys can figure it out while I unbox this. Oh wow, this one comes with a manual. Ooh, a little box. So these two are both parts for um, a hot end I have for a 3D printer. This is a fake uh, mosquito hot end. And yes, I know, I was already told, probably not a good idea to buy uh, fakes because it could hurt the company who develops them. Completely understand, um, you know, I just... I just don't have, you know, $150 for a single hot end. So although it's not an excuse, I completely understand. It is what it is. It's in my hands now. So uh, what I was thinking is this is for my custom 3D printer build. And since it's for my custom 3D printer build, 
I was thinking that a small nozzle with regular flow might not be the best uh, the, the best match for it. Really, I should get uh, something that's higher flow. So I bought the high flow variant of the uh, the center part here. Let me uh, open this up and then I'll zoom you in. But basically, this has a bigger chunk of aluminum or aluminum of copper. I don't know if you can peel it over. I think you can. So it has a bigger chunk of copper here. And so the uh, heater block there will have more to heat up. And so you can feed filament through relatively faster. I really should zoom you in though. So here it goes. It should be clearer now. Uh, so this threaded portion or this uh, portion here with the head for a wrench there, that's part of this whole throat here and that's what that this replaces. So this basically gives you a bigger chunk of copper and you got a little insulator up top, this little uh, silicone boot that goes over it and that keeps that section warm or at least warmer and it allows you to push more filament through without cooling the hot end. There's a couple things also that helps. So when I bought this one here, this is actually a chunk of copper instead of a chunk of aluminum like most of them are. This is actually quite heavy. The only problem is if you look down here, this is the hole for the temperature sensor, the thermistor. And um, the thermistors I bought are a little bit of a loose fit in there. So I was kind of losing sleep as to you know what I can use to go in there when I decided, you know what, I'll just do this properly and I'll go get another block. And this block should be designed lightly different. So it's the same thing, it has a slightly different silicone sock on it. But this block, also full copper, which is why it was expensive, 20 some bucks. All right, this block also has a set screw in the front here. So my uh, heater cartridge will go into here, get clamped by this one and my temperature probe will go into here and get clamped by these little set screws. So now I won't have to worry about how to attach the little set screws. And so it should be it should be quite easy now to get this working. Also this boot is a little bit higher quality than the one that came onto here. So this block is now kind of wasted, but I mean, I think I could figure out other things to do with it. I just need to figure out how to get a thermistor to stay in there. So let's uh, swap these and see how easy it goes. Not sure if you've ever seen how these things go together, but it's pretty smart. Um, so yeah, underneath on the block here, you just uh, stuff a Allen key or an Allen head driver. And you take out these two main screws here. And they're the main screws that hold the heat sink to the body. And when you get them off, it's actually really smart because this part here, the shiny part, this shiny part down here is supposed to stay hot. That's what that's what heats up your uh, filament and melts it. This part up here is supposed to stay cool. Uh, if your filament starts changing phases before it gets down into here, that's when you get jams and clogs and stuff. So these screws are uh, stainless steel which don't transfer heat very well but they're still screws they have you know kind of a thick body three millimeter body um, these are stainless steel pipes they're um, they're thin walled pipes and they just support by resting onto the block here and so uh, that's how you're able to transfer less heat from there up to the top this is also a stainless steel pipe which means it also transfers uh, heat very poorly, but there's a copper heat sink on the pipe in order to keep it cool. Then this here comes off. You just need a socket or a wrench and same thing with your um, nozzle. And then you would thread the new one. So this one here into here like that. You would secure it with, you know, your wrench like so. And then you can pop this back on. This should fit. Oh, looks like the holes aren't made properly. 
Guess I should have expected this. This does not actually fit. Hmm. Let's see what happens if I run the screws through it. No, these are way too small. Dang, so this block isn't ideal either. Looks like these holes are smaller on one side, is that possible? Nope, looks like they use two millimeter screws and these are for three millimeter screws. Dang, so the other option I was thinking of is drilling and putting a set screw in the original uh, hot heat block, but that could be problematic. So here's the, let me show you the actual problem. So here's the uh, thermistor, which is supposed to be uh, for this specific hot end. And so if you take this and you pop it into the old one, see how that's a loose fit? Kind of wobbles in there. That won't give you an accurate temperature. So I wanted, you know, this one to sort of, uh, you know, have the set screws force it up against one side so it'd be more accurate. So it looks like this block might actually not be what I needed in the first place. So that's quite a, quite a shame because, um, yeah, those set screws. So I could drill, again, I could drill and tap these hole, this one, a hole into here, um, but it's very hard to drill on an angle like that. Sorry about the focus as I bring it up off the board. So the other option is I can use thermal adhesive to uh, set this into here. Um, but I would like to be able to clear it out if the need arises. Dang. Oh well. I guess uh, this is what you get for not buying original. Well, at least I got the uh, high flow uh, sort of cool tube put on. So that's good. That's going to work. Um, just going to have to figure out what to do about the uh, thermistor. But I think either way, maybe it'll be worth trying to just jam it in there with a little bit of thermal grease and see what happens. I'm getting close to being able to test my printer. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here, uh, which is actually old enough that I don't remember what it is. $3.68, June 10th to June 20th. Oh, well. I should have probably had that other one out. <laughs> These are uh, nozzles for a 3D printer. Well, so because I ordered the high flow adapters, I also ordered some 0.8 millimeter nozzles and uh, this seller said just leave a note if you want different sizes you can say you know three pieces of one uh, three pieces of another etc etc there should be ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah there uh, there's ten at point eight I ordered some at uh, one millimeter 0.8 millimeter um, 0.5 and then a point one uh, however they responded to my message saying that they've already shipped it, so it's all 0.8. So that's okay. Uh, 0 0.8 millimeter nozzles, they're bigger, so they flow more, and so you can get more plastic down and uh, drop those printing times. So that was the idea with this. Sorry about the fact that they're not too interesting, but they're very cheap, under $4 for 10 of them. So now I have the 0.4s. I have a bunch of 0.4 replacements, and now I have a bunch of 0.8. Hopefully this last one here is not 3D printer related, um, but it was ordered at the same time, so it, it could be $6.47. Here it goes. Oh, I don't think so. They're not. Oh yeah, these are really interesting. Uh, so, a lot of people comment on my older videos about um, about the TP4056, they're looking for uh, something that'll protect a battery, like an 18650, but also provide five volts for Arduino. And I said, that's not really the TP4056 that you're looking for. You're looking for one of these. So I ordered this one, uh, five of these boards, 
and one of these boards and in fact I'm not sure which ones I'm going to prefer so if I like these more I'm going to order more um, but what these are let me zoom you in what these are they're basically power bank PCBs so you know when you have a uh, sort of lithium ion power bank with USB uh, connectors basically it's just uh, 18650 cells in parallel so you know 3.7 volts um, plugged up to one of these things and what it does is it handles the charging via this micro USB uh, it handles the protection by TP4056 which I think they're all up on here oh no DW01 would be the um, protection chip TP4056 for the uh, charging which I'm sure is one of these actually no this one does not have a TP4056 on it but it does have a micro because it also has these charging LEDs on the back and a a button very likely to turn on this little flashlight basically little LED um, but it also does the boosting up to 5 volts so you can you know get uh, get your 5 volt power out of here so one of these should be enough to power a uh, Arduino this one here should be the same thing just checking yeah there's a 4056 right there and there is there is not a DW01 on this. So I think this one will need a protected cell. This one could take an unprotected cell. So I guess it'll just depend. I'm going to have to take a look at these individually. Like I said, I have no internet today. But that's going to be really interesting. Um, these boards are exceedingly cheap. Like it was like $7 Canadian for five of these boards and one of these. And so I'm going to have lots of fun taking a look at these, and I think you guys are going to be interested as well. There is no better solution for adding an 18650 battery to an Arduino at this price. And so that's it. That's, uh, that's all for this 3D printer heavy mailbag. But there's good reason, because I think I'm making progress on my custom designed 3D printer. So I don't want to say when I'm going to be ready to show it off, but I will be ready to show it off soon. Hopefully not soon trademarked. Thanks again to my Patreon patrons and my single uh, channel member for um, you know supporting me through all this, allowing me to buy some cool stuff. Thank you to my viewers for you know garnering me enough of an audience to have people send me kits like this, which is pretty neat. And thank you to the commenters who give me something to read and reply to. Thanks for watching.